Welcome to the Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. Hi everyone, my name is Samir. I'm working as a Senior IoT Research Associate at Miracle Software Systems. So today, I'm going to show a demo on implementing device shadow on a Raspberry Pi with AWS IoT platform. Also, I'm going to talk a couple of real-time scenarios based on this. So moving on, coming to the agenda, I'll talk about AWS IoT platform, then I'll talk about components associated to AWS IoT platform, then AWS IoT shadow flow, I'll talk about how AWS IoT shadow services is working in real time, then I'll show an end-to-end -end architecture. Then I'll show a complete live demonstration on connecting a Raspberry Pi to AWS IoT platform using device shadow concept. IoT is a trending technology that is responsible to communicate between sensors to sensors, sensors to devices, and devices to devices. There are millions and billions of devices, sensors, that are communicating with each other using one or other IoT platform. So AWS IoT is also a booming platform that is responsible to do, you know, some sort of responsible to communicate in between sensors to devices or devices to platform. So here you can see, so the smart devices that can be any sensors that we need a device gateway to communicate or to send data or to retrieve data uh, to and fro in the both way using device gateway. Device gateway, there are different kind of device gateway, the Raspberry Pi, BeagleBone, Intel X, Arduino. So those kind of, you know, some sort of device gateways are there to communicate to AWS ID platform. So then from the AWS ID platform, by using mobile app, the user can access those his data or his or her information from the cloud. So next, moving on to components. There are different components that, is, that are associated to AWS IoT. You know, the, coming to the first one, message broker. Message broker is responsible to do publish and subscribe tr from the devices or the sensors to the platform, or it might be a mobile app that is publishing and subscribing kind of. The next, AWS grid security. This is one of the major advantages that are coming to AWS IoT platform because the devices are connecting securely to the platform with you by using keys and uh, you know some sort of certificates that are needed to communicate to your platform to identify yeah this device is registered in AWS ID platform. And moving on, then rules engine. This rules engine is responsible to do routing kind of stuff. You can write your own rules. Suppose. I want my AC to be turned on when the temperature of the room increases by or raise or it reaches to 30 degrees centigrade. So those kind of conditional rules I can write in rules engine. So next moving on to device shadow. I'll talk about that in in the later in the later slide. Then moving on to device registry. This is also an important that whenever you know there are so many devices out there, as I said, Raspberry Pi or Beagle Bone or Arduino. So suppose one device is connected to two to three sensors and another device also connected to multiple sensors. So to manage and maintain, to manage, maintain and manipulate all the information, we need a device registry. It's called to have a record of all the information, we need a device registry. So moving on, AWS, IoT Shadow. So coming to Shadow, this is also one major advantage that is introduced by AWS IoT platform. So it's a kind of JSON document that is used to store and retrieve current state information of a thing. Thing is nothing but a device. So in AWS IoT terminology, we call the device as a thing. To identify each and every device, we need to maintain a thing in IoT platform. I'll show that in practical and I'll show a demo. So th those kind of, so this is a complete a copy or a duplicate of that entire data structure, metadata structure of your device. So this this one, this shadow is, will be completely, you know, some sort of maintained and managed by completely 
by AWS IoT platform. You know, AWS IoT platform is taking care of everything. So no need to go and store in the database or something. It, it will store in AWS IoT is responsible to store that. So this device, this SDK, we can use uh, AWS IoT given so many options to use device SDK. We can use Java, we can use Python, we can use Node.js. There are different types of SDK to do that. So from the device gateway, it will go and it will create a duplicate metadata or duplicate data in the IoT, in the AWS IoT, and it's a kind of JSON, you know, JSON format, then your app can be request for that. So next, moving on, this is the complete architecture, as I said. So this device smart sensors are communicating to, you know, your device gateway, then from the authentication, it securely will communicate to your you know, AWS IoT platform, there you, we can use Lambda functions to trigger a serverless code, to, to trigger to any kind of database. We can use API Gateway to have an endpoint so that the mobile application or the mobile user can easily access that endpoint. So moving on, so, I, so let me show you a quick demonstration on this AWS IoT using device shard. I'll show, I'll use a Raspberry Pi to show how we can actually apply a device shadow concept in the Raspberry Pi to communicate to AWS IoT platform. So let me quickly show you the dashboard. So I created a thing. So this, this thing is registered in the AWS IoT platform to identify yeah, this. I'm getting the information. Uh, this thing is registered in the AWS IoT platform. So this is my name of the thing, uh, by version 253. So there are different options. Security, shadow, interact, activity. So let me go to shadow. So this is here. You can see this is, as I said, this is a, this is a document, complete JSON document that is maintained by AWS IoT platform. So this is here. You can see the current state. This is the current state information, 1559 from the timestamp. I should able to know that. This is my current state information, and this is my metadata. So let me show. Let me show the, let me run my code. There we go, connecting to AWS IoT, then this was my, this was my last and this is my current updated state. So here you can see the changes in the version as well. So this, the last version was 33 and it got updated to 34. So here you can see the difference. So this JSON document, so here you can see the changes. So previously as I shown you, the shadow state, it was, it was around 1559, so now it got changed to 1628. So the state has been updated. So the version changes to 34. So this is the current state. So as I said, this, this shadow is responsible to, to this JSON document is responsible to completely, you can retrieve the current state and you can update your current state device information by using device shadow. There is another option that we can, we can test it. If you go to MQTT client, it is given by AWS IDE platform. So if you go to sub subscribe to topic, here I mentioned this one. Th these API, you can get it under interact. So also, you there are so many APIs, you can, you can interact, or you can get the current information from the device shadow from the AWS IT platform using HTTP or using MQTT protocols. Uh, this, these topics, by using MQTT topic, you can, there are so many APIs that is given by, given by AWS IoT platform itself. So by using this APIs, you can always able to get the information or you can also, also able to retrieve the information from the platform itself. So these are the APIs. So AWS thing, Raspberry Pi, R Pi version 253 shadow update except. So if you keep this one here, I'm just subscribing the things from here. Let me clear this one. 
Let me run the code again. Connecting to AWS IoT securely, it is registering. Here we go. So here you can see the current updated stage is 430 and also the metadata. By using this API, we can able to subscribe the information from here. So this is the subscription, this is the subscription API, update accepted. So by using this, we, we should able to get that one. Let me run the code again. Yeah, there it is. There we go. So this is the last updated one, and this is this is one. So you can always you should able to subscribe the information, subscribe the data. Metadata the four thirty was the last timestamp, and this is the current four thirty one. By using the timestamp, we should able to know that. So as I said, this is the major advantages of device shadow to get the information from the from the from the device itself. So let me crop up some instance in front of you. So let let me so suppose I'm using a smart car parking system where I need the current state information when my device was last updated without going whether my device was connected to internet or not, I can able to get the current last updated state of my device by hitting that API, so get information. By hitting that API, get information, I can also able to get that current state information from the device. So by using that, by, by using that, I, I can also update my information and I can also calculate that how, how much time my car was being there in that car parking area. So from the last parking timestamp and the current timestamp, I should able to go get the information about how much time my car was there or my device was there from, uh, from, the, from this information. The major advantages of this, you know, without hitting the database, I'm getting the information. So it reduces, the first point is it reduces the number of round trips and it, it it is giving the less burden to the server so that the server no need to go to the database and getting the information for me. I can get the information from the device, from the platform itself. My device will get the information from the platform itself. No need to depend on any number of round trips or any number of databases. The AWS IoT platform is maintaining that JSON document in itself. So this is one of the major advantages of device shadow. So there are three operations probably I can perform. So delete, update, and get information. So I can always get that and update that and delete this information. I can I can able to delete this document as well. I can also export this information. Suppose I want to maintain a record of how many, how, how many times my device got updated. I can have a record of that as well. So I can download that. So whether my device is in online or offline, irrespective of that, I can also get the information. I can also get the current state and also update the current state information by from this device shadow. So this is also a major service that is introduced by the IoT platform. Stay tuned for more videos on latest trending technologies. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. Thank you for watching The Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. For more on innovation, please visit miraclesoft.com slash dlabs.